Okay, we are back and we are live. This is Jake Mayor David reporting to you from Jezreel Valley Winery. But I have as my first guest on the virtual for you wine tasting, uh, Ellie Wertman, who inspired me uh, in my wine drinking over the past, I hate to admit it, 30 years. So uh, here we have Ellie. He has in front of him, say hello, Ellie. Hello, Jacob, and hello, guests. Great to uh, to be on the show. Yeah. And he's got in front of him uh, Bachelot Sauvignon Blanc, and I have in front of me Bachelot Sauvignon Blanc as well. I used the camera, so I keep going this way and that way. But I have uh, Bachelot Sauvignon Blanc 2019. I hope that's what you're drinking. Is that what you're drinking, 2019? Of course. It's, it's our, uh, oop, wrong way. Yes, it's the most recent release, and uh, the 18 was sold out in six months. Probably won't be happening this year. <laughs> well, you never know. Never know. Let's see what happens. So uh, we've got the 2019. I'm going to be drinking it uh, nice, ice cold. Ellie has his nice, nice cold. But before we get to the wine, uh, Ellie's going to tell us a little bit about Bachelomo and the name, which I mentioned on previous episodes. But he's going to tell us about Bachelomo, how he came to it, and what brought him to be making wine. Go ahead, Ellie. All right. Thank you. So I, I've been dreaming about making wine in Israel for a very long time. I stumbled upon Bachelomo in 2010, so we're actually celebrating 10 years since we uh, since we launched the project. And um, I fell in love with it. And people ask me, you know, what is Bachelomo? It's, it's the name of a place. It's probably the most uh, uh, underknown uh, town in Israel. It has all of 13 homes, and it was established in 1889. And I think if you want to understand where modern Israel started. Bashlamo represents that. Uh, it was from the first Aliyah, people returning to Israel. Um, and the first industry that came to Bashlamo was grape growing. And I thought it would be really exciting to plant grapes in Bashlamo uh, and to make kind of the history relevant today and to bring young Israelis back to working the land. Uh, as you may know, uh, we work with a very special program called Regavim, uh, young high school students who work in agriculture and work the land uh, alongside their studies. And uh, 10 years later, we have uh, multiple vineyards. And the Bashlamo, of course, is our flagship wine. And we're excited to share it uh, today with you. Yeah. And I just want to tell you, Ali, somebody was uh, who came to visit me uh, the other day. He didn't come inside the winery. Don't worry. We sat outside, physically distant. But um, uh, we did do El Chaim. He drove past uh, Bachlomo and he saw the vineyards. And he came to me and said, did you know there are vineyards on the way here, on the right-hand side of the road? I said, yes, I do. And uh, I know whose they are. And I even know who planted them. So, yeah. I uh, think I think you were there for the planting as well. I was there for uh, part of the plantings, yeah. Welcome, Mordechai Holtz, who uh, helped inspire uh, these broadcasts. Um, so we're going to get into Sauvignon Blanc. Now, Sauvignon Blanc was the first wine Ellie made under the Bachelomo brand. Uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the first drinkers. Uh, why Sauvignon Blanc? Why was that the first wine that you made? And, and why is it so important today? So, so in 2010, there were not that many great uh, Israeli white wines. It was uh, totally lacking from the kosher market, from the Israeli market. And if you think of what Israel is all about, it's about a hot climate. It's it's a lot of people that like to go to the beach or to the pool. Not this week. Um, and you know, I was curious as to why there was no great white wines. And we set out a goal of making kind of the best summer wine in Israel uh, that you can enjoy on a hot day. And uh, we, even though it was a French varietal, we thought it would be the ultimate uh, Israeli wine, and that's what we set out to do. Beautiful. How long does it take uh, Sauvignon Blanc to reach, after planting it, to reach uh, usability from the vineyard point of view? So, you know, from a halachic perspective, uh, it's four years, and uh, for all intent and purpose, it probably took us uh, five or six years and still we, until we started getting commercial quantities coming out of the vineyard, and this will be our uh, ninth year this summer since we planted this specific uh, vineyard. So. Uh, uh, we are very happy, and this is a 100% estate-grown Sauvignon Blanc, so it's all our own grapes. And just so everybody knows, you can go visit the vineyards. You could do a tasting and a, a drinking, if you will, in the vineyards. Uh, if you're lucky enough, Ellie will uh, be there himself. But if not, there's some wonderful people that can host you whenever you want to come. 
Uh, just go to botchlamo.com and all the information is there. And we're going to start opening this and uh, drinking this. Ellie uh, already uh, opened his bottle, but uh, I didn't open mine yet. And I want to just show everyone, uh, besides incredible wine, Botchlamo has incredible packaging. Just oh, wrong way. Incredible packaging. They even give you this nice little starter that shows you where to, to start. And why is this? Because unlike other wine bottles, you do not need a corkscrew to open this wine. And you'll see in a second as to why. Here we go. I don't want to cut myself on this. So this is a glass cork. Ellie, tell us, how did you think of glass corks? Where did that come from? So first of all, credit is due to, uh, to Ari Earl, our winemaker, uh, and your, uh, your wine consultant. Um, but I really yes. thought kind of from a uh, symbolic perspective and everything we try and do, we do with meaning that, that wine is something which is deeply uh, rooted in our tradition as Jewish people. We're going to drink four glasses tomorrow night. Um, some people might drink more. Um, but modern Israel is also an innovative society to try and make things uh, better and modern and more interesting. And we thought kind of putting on top of an ancient tradition uh, of winemaking, we should put a new uh, elegant uh, high-tech uh, glass cork, which really tells the story of Israel today. And then uh, these bottles can be reused again and again and again. This glass cork will keep working. Yes, and I'll just show, because you showed, that they are different, too. So it's kind of like collectible. Uh, I think you have a different uh, print on the top of yours for 2019. Mine has a clear bed that if you look through her head, you can see the wine. Ah. So well, people who have been buying Bosch Lomo for many years and have collected these tops uh, probably have 20 different variations of the, uh, of the uh, glass cork at this time, at least 20. Well, I'm, I, I'm very proud to say that in my collection, I have, uh, I think, every Bachelomo wine from the past uh, seven years. Um, if I haven't drunk it, if I, I might have drunk some of it. Um, but if not, I, I should have all of them uh, in the collection. Anyway, take us through the wine. Do a, do a tasting. Guide us through. So, as I mentioned earlier, you should take a, a smell. It's, it was meant to be kind of a, a spring summer wine, um, elegant, chilled. The, the nose is very uh, fruity, right? There's a, almost like a fresh blossom that comes with this season of the citrus fr fruits uh, blossoming in Israel. My son Sammy just came back from 12 days of, uh, of doing uh, harvest for Israeli farmers who don't have labor right now since we're all inside. And it's that smell that kind of reminds us of the fields and of the uh, fruits of Israel, which I think is an amazing way to start. You take a sip, and I hope some of our guests, everybody who I invited, I told them to bring a bottle. So uh, hopefully others are joining us in a quick taste. Bechaim. What you'll taste is a kind of a dry... Um, easy, uh, smooth white wine, which uh, goes very well, perhaps goes down a little bit too well uh, for some people, because before you know it, the bottle's gone. Um, but I think we've kind of created something which really matches our, our environment here, right? So it's, it's the fruity smell, the dry uh, mouth feel, um, and a kind of easy drinking, very tasty, very minerally uh, white wine. What do you think, Jacob? So I have to admit that um, this is my preferred drink. Oh, I have to tell people, I didn't bring a picture with me, but and I can't go walking around uh, with my new broadcast studio. I can't go walking around with my phone to show you, but I'll figure it out. But uh, this wine is actually also made in a um, very interesting concrete egg. Um, anybody wants to get a picture of it, let, let us know. Uh, and it's a super cool winemaking process as well. But I do want to say that after I go for a nice run and I come back uh, all nice and hot and sweaty to sit and relax with an ice cold glass, glass of uh, Bachelot Sauvignon Blanc, there's nothing better. Uh, six months out of the year, it's summer here. So uh, please enjoy it. I hope you all get to come visit us if you're watching from, from outside the uh, Holy Land. Come uh, visit us as soon as you can, as soon as we're safe. Um, but wherever you are, Ellie, can you find this wine in the United States? This wine is available 
in the United States, along with our rosé, which is our other kind of summer wine. Um, all of our wines are available online on kosherwine.com um, and at 40 or 50 uh, wine shops, uh, kosher wine shops across the U.S. Beautiful. If I don't uh, care about the kosher part, it's still a great wine, right? It's an excellent wine. The, uh, one of the compliments that we got was, I would have never guessed this was an Israeli wine. So I guess that answers your question. Kosher, not kosher, in absolute terms, it's just a very good, uh, wonderful, tasty white wine on a nice, hot, or warm, sunny day. Anywhere oh, I, would say, I, would say, I would say excellent. And uh, our friend Mark Squires from uh, Robert Parker agrees with me. I believe he gave it uh, 90 points, which is quite, uh, quite an accomplishment. And um, as Ellie said 10 years ago, if anybody said that an Israeli white wine would be awarded 90 points from Robert Parker, we would all laugh. Uh, and here we are uh, drinking it. Uh, so Mazal Tov and Yishar Kof to the whole team. And if you want to get it here in Israel, anybody watching live or in reruns here in Israel, uh, you can get in touch with Bachlamo, bachlamo.com, B-A-T-S-H-A, whatever. I'm, I already drank a glass of wine, but <laughs> Bachlamo, B-A-T-S-H-L-O-M-O.com. Uh, and you can order it for home delivery here in Israel, right? Yes, uh, our most wonderful general manager, uh, Jody, uh, will be happy to speak to you and take your order and have it delivered the next day to your front door. Woo! Okay. So home delivery uh, continuing hopefully throughout Cholomoed, throughout the holiday. It's already getting warmer out there here. Uh, for everywhere else in the world, please enjoy a nice glass of Sauvignon Blanc, uh, whether it's over the holiday or afterwards. Stock up, uh, as Ellie said, this uh, sells out uh, pretty quickly. So thank you, Ellie, for being the first official guest on Virtual For You uh, Wine Tasting, and look forward to having you on and drinking more Bachelomo in the future. Jacob, thank you, thank you very much, and uh, happy Passover. Chag Sameach to everyone. Um, it's going to be one of the more interesting Passovers ever. Um, one point, which you may have discussed earlier this week, is the amount of wine that people have been consuming in uh, isolation. I think we are setting new consumption records and uh, tomorrow night probably won't be any different for most people. So happy Passover and L'chaim to everyone. And let's, uh, let's, bless, let's bless ourselves as winemakers that after we all come out of isolation, our wine consumption will only continue to grow. I'll drink to that. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. L'chaim.